Thanks very much. It's uh, very nice of you to invite me. I, 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 I know one or two faces in the audience, so forgive me if you've, you've seen my presentation before, but I, I, I'm going to talk primarily about Fisher Road, uh, which is obviously uh, my, the, my passion, actually, though, over the last number of years. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, also talk about a couple of other initiatives that I'm in, involved with, but I'll, I'll focus on Bishy Road, first of all, and uh, then I'll move on to, uh, to those other initiatives that I've been involved with. Uh, I'm uh, an independent councillor, as well as being uh, the, the former chairman of Bishy Road. I'm now actually the president of, of, of Bishy Road Trades Association. I'm not sure if it's a demotion or a promotion, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, that's, that's what I am now. Uh, in 2015, November 2015, uh, Bishy Road won the Great British High Streets Award for the best local parade in the country. Uh, and not only did it win that award, it also won the overall winner and was officially Britain's best high street. Now, that's a, a very big <coughs> claim for a, a, a very small a very ordinary street, you know, if uh, uh, the truth be known. But this is, this is Bishy Road. It's very much uh, a Victorian area uh, with some uh, council houses front and back. Uh, and what we're known for in, on Bishy Road is primarily the strength of the community that we have around there and the fact that Bishy Road has become this focus uh, of, uh, the, for, the, for the community and, and businesses uh, are now thriving. Uh, social media, very much one of our strengths, uh, and marketing. We do a lot of marketing. We market our street very strongly. Now, I'm a shopkeeper on, on the street. I run uh, Frankie and Johnny's Cook Shop with my wife, Frankie. Uh, I emphasise my wife, Frankie, because quite a number of people come down the street, look up and see Frankie and Johnny's Cook Shop and go, yeah, definite gay couple there. But I just thought I would I'd clarify that before we move on. Uh, uh, this was our entry to Great British High Street, or the introduction to our entry, and essentially what we, was, what we were saying in that is the, the fact that our shops are crucial to our local community, and that that mix of shopkeepers and the local community was the magic mix that, that really made a huge difference. Uh, if, if, you, if you don't know where Bishy Road is, we're just outside the city walls, just south of the city, on the way to Bishop Thorpe. This is what the street looks like. Fairly ordinary little street with that mix of the fish and chip shop, the bike shop, uh, the hardware shop, the, uh, that, that, that ordinary mix, the Chinese restaurant, the Italian restaurant, etc. Um, but the interesting fact about Bishy Road is that it's 95% independence. We have just four shops uh, on the street which are chains. The rest are independence. Now, uh, I moved to York in 1979. Uh, okay, before, I, before I continue, can I just say, this is very much a personal perspective, so forgive me for this, you're gonna have to indulge me. It is my perspective and uh, it's unapologetically home spun, so uh, you'll, you'll just have to live with that. Uh, I moved to York in 1979 uh, when I started as a teacher. I, I taught at a comprehensive school initially and then I uh, taught for, for 20 years uh, in, in special schools, uh, teaching children with learning difficulties. I didn't realise at the time it was going to be a perfect preparation for becoming a shopkeeper, but uh, it, it turned out to be that way. Uh, but when I moved to, uh, to Bishy Road in 1979, very different place to, to what it is now. And primarily because of this hideous thing here. It was going to be an inner ring road that was going to run round the city walls. <coughs> Councillors have got an awful lot to answer for. It is hard to believe that anybody could have proposed this. But nonetheless, in 1979, the concept was that the city needed a ring road that was going to destroy an awful lot of, of that, this area. In actual fact, it was going to go right through the centre of the post office. It was going to uh, sweep away some of the most lovely parts of that Victorian era, 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 area rather, 
and be, be absolutely disastrous. But that it had an effect. The effect was that the area became blighted, it got very run down, and Bishy Road really was famous for, for being run down at that time. I, I found it very difficult to get a mortgage on a house in the area back in those days, which is hard to believe. Now, after having taught for over 20 years in schools, I decided I'd had enough. I wanted to get out and do something different, and I was aiming to, uh, uh, to buy a business. I didn't really have a, a firm idea as to what I was going to do. And my wife tells a story, and it's essentially true, that I went out one day to buy a tin of paint, and I came back with a shop. <laughs> and this is essentially true. I met Mr. Shearer, who owned Pexton's Hardware, a real institution on Bishy Road, and over that tin of paper, we negotiated the price, and I went home, and uh, it was a bit of a surprise to my wife, but she got, <laughs> and she came round, and is very much uh, the, the lead, I would say, actually, rather than, I just take the credit, but she does all the work, and I confess. And uh, in 2001, we expanded and uh, we moved into the shop next door, so we doubled the size of the shop. Uh, we were determined that we were going to, uh, not we, we, that, we, that failure was not an option. Uh, these are not all my children, but four of them are. And uh, it, for me, it could, it could not be an option to fail. So we were utterly determined that we were going to succeed. And in actual fact, I think uh, the first years were very successful and our little business went from strength to strength. But this was very much part of that time in the early uh, noughties when a strong feature was that people were very much gravitating towards the, the, the main shops, the supermarkets, the hypermarkets, uh, the B's, B and Q's and so on. And running a small hardware shop you, you realise the fact that people get it wrong continually. People assume that small shops, small shops bad, big shops good. Not, not the case at all. And uh, <coughs> I, I would be very upset at times when people would assume that my small shop was going to be more expensive than the B, B and Q's, when it certainly wasn't. So there was a lot of a sense of the fact that people were going out to the supermarkets and we were losing business uh, to that. But we, we were surviving. But then, 2005, Terry's factory just on our doorstep closed down. There was a loss of 700 jobs and very much a, a sort of well, a, a depressing cloud fell on the street, really. We didn't quite know what was going to happen. And then 2007, um, it, the, whose policy was this but closing down of post offices and that huge effect that it has on, on local communities again that shop went and at that time we had uh, in, a, in a, an area with about 35 shops we had seven empty shops so our perspective for the future was looking bleak we were feeling a little, little depressed but then out of the blue uh, came our eureka moment and that was there was a conference held in York about car free cities and about the idea of uh, what can we do to uh, encourage people not to use their cars and they suggested <coughs> that Fishing Road could do a little experiment and uh, uh, the, the, the proposal was that we close down the street we had a big street party and that we see what that effect ha has, losing the cars, closing the street, and, and see what, what, what the upshot was. Now, I confess, prior to this, uh, I think as a local shopkeeper, you tend to live very much in isolation. I tended not to communicate massively with the other shops around me. But, as I said, this was our Eureka moment. What happened was, the, uh, the, the the people that were running the conference organised the street closure uh, and at, they closed the street at 6 o'clock that evening and at 6.15 there were over 3,000 people in the street and it, uh, there were literally shopkeepers standing at their doors with their mouths drooping in disbelief that, that, that this number of people had turned out and from that point on we realised 
that in actual fact our street was a, was a very important street to the area and, and that people really do love these little shopping streets and that was a real inspiration to everybody involved and that's what our first street party and uh, a subsequent street party looked like and that little girl in the uh, in the merry-go-round to me speaks a thousand words that was exactly what we were hoping to achieve that sense of of local community that you just cannot replicate elsewhere. Um, soon after that, we, we we set up our first website. That was what 2010. We thought we were really cutting edge, <coughs> and in in reality, uh, I mean things have moved on so much. But back in 2010, we were actually sort of doing a good job to create a website for ourselves, and that was our first foray into working as a group. The, uh, the street party had really inspired us and, and, and we, we started to work as a, as a group, but we, uh, that, that initial inspiration really started to have an effect. We got a, some brilliant businesses moving into the empty shops. We got the pig and pastry, which is, uh, for, for those people that know, know Bishy Road, absolutely superb. The pig and pastry moved in. The, the butcher got the award for the best uh, butchers in, in, in the area and, and we won Brit the, the award for Britain's best hardware shop which, was, which was, we were very proud of. But we needed to formalise this and to make things, uh, uh, we needed to get together formally. So we created a constitution, we created a traders association and we formally got together and, and, and I mean shopkeepers are the same thing throughout but uh, I know that Bishy Road uh, they, they don't like parting with the money and 30, 30 quid a year was our initial uh, fee to join uh, but we, we had about 30 in the first instance and we started to start to publicize our little street and uh, we we really wanted to recapture the monopoly that the supermarkets have taken so we created this monopoly board as, as our image for the street. And we did our, very, our utmost to, to recapture that, uh, that monopoly. And uh, the logo, the Bishy Road logo became uh, our, our image and our, and our brand, uh, which has obviously gone on to serve as well. Uh, but in, in, I, I, in, I think that the branding and the publicity and, and the work that we all put into to marketing our street collectively made such a difference to the street and the street started to pick up without any doubt at all. Uh, so much so that in actual fact, uh, in the Times in 2012, uh, we were rated as uh, uh, in the top uh, 20 trendy places to live in the country. We were number, we were number nine to be precise. Uh, but uh, things have really started to change. We then went on to do street parties and events became very much our credo. And this was our first foray into festive lights. We uh, spent a, a few hundred quid on lights and it, that was our first lights and that, that really started to lift again for, for our Christmas period. But then our great opportunity, we took it with both hands, uh, was the Tour, Tour de France. <coughs> and uh, as far as we were concerned, this was a big street party with a bit of a bike ride coming through it. <laughs> uh, and our focus was very much on that, on that, on that street party. And we were utterly determined that we were going to maximise everything that, that we could. And we took our logo, which was the I Heart Bishy Road, and we went distinctly from there for the day. <laughs> And it, we became uh, Jado Michiru, and uh, people dressed in French clothes, and uh, we became, we we really did a, a big job of decorating the street, and we were re rewarded as uh, the the best uh, street or the best uh, urban street in Yorkshire for for that for that event, and that was the event itself coming through. And, uh, uh, on that day. Uh, throughout the day, we had well over 20,000 people came to Bishop Thorpe Road and uh, when they left, 
it was like the locusts had descended. <laughs> it was a wonderful day for us. Uh, the pubs had sold out of beer. The shops had done superbly well. And uh, that, this for us was a, a massive opportunity, but we took the opportunity with both hands and made the most of it for ourselves. And that really gave us a whole series of lessons, lessons about social media, about doing what you could to, to maximise what you've got. And uh, social media became a bit of a strength. Uh, we then started to refine what we've got, and our re refinements uh, started to, we, we, again, more publicity, uh, making it hand-drawn and very much uh, a, a, a friendly local feel to it. And we uh, refined our website, uh, the notice board that we, 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 we paid for a notice board from the profits that we made from the Tour de France. We, I think we made a profit of about £10,000 a day and we invested that in a notice board and in a website and the notice board became a little, uh, uh, little image that we, we used uh, on the uh, website to, to sell the street. Uh, we then got an award for the, the, uh, from the City Council for the uh, uh, service with, with a smile, which is normally given to uh, an individual shop <coughs> for service, but they gave that award to the whole street because they felt that the street very much functioned together. Uh, I think this was actually another little inspirational moment when we actually went to crowdfunding. We decided that we needed to improve our winter lights. And uh, we went out to crowdfunding. We needed 500 lights to go across the street, or 500 bulbs to go across the street. And uh, we, <coughs> we asked for £10 per bulb to raise £5,000 towards the costs. The other five came from sponsors, and the, the, the last 5000 to pay for the whole thing came from the shopkeepers. <coughs> And we set a date of four weeks to raise £5,000. And after 10 days, we'd, re we'd reach that target. And the effect of that uh, really, again, pushed things on for us. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we were going to have the, the illuminations night on the same night as the city council were having their illuminations. And we thought, oh God, we've shot ourselves in the foot this time. But in actual fact, uh, the city centre had 500 people turn up, and we had 4,000 people <laughs> on this road. And the reason was that the people wanted to come and see their, their bulb. The family had bought it, they would bought into the street, they wanted to come, and they wanted to support the local community. And not only local community, there were people were coming from far and wide to sort of see this. And uh, those two little girls, they... Uh, they did the light up actually and together and the little girl on the left said this is the, the best day of my life and that again was very much part of that warmth that you get from uh, I think what we try to achieve. Uh, we don't only do social media, very keen on, we produce a little paper uh, about one, four, three, four times a year and again that's for people that are not into social media. Again uh, because of the fact that we were organised as a group, we were able to do stuff that we couldn't have done if we were a bun bunch of individuals. <laughs> and the winning post, which is on Bishop Thorpe Road, uh, was ripe for being taken over by one of the major chains like Sainsbury's, uh, Tesco's or whatever, as a supermarket. And we decided, well, if this happens, it's going to have such a massively negative effect on us. And as a group, we listed the pub as an asset of community value. And without that joint work, there is no way that we could have had that effect. And, uh, I mean, essentially, with a combination of social media, with a combination of uh, publicity, and really doing our very best to attract good businesses, we now certainly don't have any empty shops. We, uh, if the shop comes up, they're, they're grasped immediately, and uh, the place is very much a vibrant and, and living place and, and, and going from strength to strength. But we, uh, I think, to be honest, one of the main helps was actually applying to the Great British High Streets Awards. I think that pushed us forward. It really focused our minds. 
and uh, I think that that brought us all together even even more so. So that was an experience, <coughs> very hard work, but an experience that was very very beneficial. And now, if you Google Bishy Road, those are the sorts of image that you'll you'll see. Very much a positive one. We've moved away from. The, the worries and, and woes of 2007, 2010. And, and really, I think that the street, it's only small, it's not that, that wonderful. Bit of a plain Jane in some respects, but it's got a fantastic atmosphere. And I, I think uh, it's proved a little point that mm -hmm. I think is useful for wherever you might be from. So I hope that's uh, helpful. Thank you.